the place node tool. The place node tool allows us to place in our drainage structures for our drainage project, like our inlets, manholes, flared in sections, etc. So to get to the place node tool, let's go to the layout tab and then go to the place node. Now inside of here, you got some different settings that you need to review and change. Personal preference, what I like to do is go through here and set this up the way I want it inside the dialog box. That way later on, whenever I'm placing the actual drainage structure in my project, I can just simply go through there and left click through those prompts. But that's just personal preference. So for this particular project here, what we're going to do is place in three curved vein drains. And the size of those are going to be two by two. So the first thing that I want to do is change my feature definition. And I'm going to go to the stormwater node folder. And you're going to see a bunch of different drainage structures that you can place inside of there. The one that I'm going to go to for this particular project is inlets. And then you'll see those inlets that are underneath here. And the way we have this set up for the most part is what is set up in our standard highway plans of what inlets that we have by default. So that's what's contained inside of these folders through here. The one that we're going to work with for this particular project is this one right here that says type A through D CV, which stands for curve vein, and the size is going to be 2 by 2. And then I'm going to look down through here, and it depends on how I want to place it. Um, if I know what the elevation is for the water coming into it at the top, I can set that elevation to give a hard-coded ele elevation. I'm not going to use that for this example because I'm going to use this final train model to determine where my inlet is going to be placed at. But that's just a couple different options right there. Another one is your rotation of how you want your particular inlet or your node to rotate. Absolute just allows you to put in whatever angle that you want. You do have the option right here to be relative to the alignment. So if you want to be relative to the center line or the edge of pavement and be relative to that, you could tie it to that. And that's what we're going to use for this example. Another option that you have is the catchment delineation, which first one that we're going to work with, I'm going to leave that unchecked. But basically what that does is it, it allows it to go through there and look at your terrain model and automatically put in the drainage area for that particular inlet. So that may be beneficial if you don't know exactly what, how much area it's, it's taking for that water to get to that inlet, that may be a good option to use. Now there are some things you need to know about that and we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but that's what that option allows you to do. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is once I have this set up, I'll just follow my prompts through here. It says, select your reference element for the node elevation. I don't have it hard coded to a certain elevation. I'm going to use the, the final terrain model that I have out here, which basically what I did was I have a final terrain model of my proposed project incorporated with my existing terrain model. So I have a final terrain model that I'm using. So I will go ahead and select that for my elevation. And you'll see as I move my mouse around, certain things may be changing. Same thing for your elevation here, you'll see that it's changing. So you know it's looking at that train model to determine where it's going to place that particular inlet. Now for this example here, I will be using Civil Accudraw also, which I have Civil Accudraw turned on along with the station offset. So the first thing that I will do is tab to my offset field, hit the letter O on my keyboard, that way I can select my center line, that way I can type in the correct station offset of where I want to place this particular inlet. So I will go ahead and select the center line. I'm not worried about a vertical offset, so I will tab to the station field. The station that I want to place this at is 3 plus 0, 0, so I'll type in 3, 0, 0. Tab to lock that in, and then my offset is going to be 26.5. which is going to be right on the, the face of that curb right there. 
So once I have those parameters set, I will left click to accept that. Next thing is for your rotation, do you want to be absolute or relative to the alignment? I already set it to relative to alignment, so I will go ahead and select that option anywhere on the screen. Now it says select your reference element for your rotation. So I will simply use this center line as my reference to rotate it from that. And now you'll see that as I'm rot rotating, I can type in whatever direction that it needs to go for for that rotation. So for like this one here, I'll go ahead and put in, either type in a directional bearing like south 0 west or south 180 west or 90 or whatever. That's one way I can do it. Or I can simply type in just a decimal degree like what I'm doing right here. So that's what I did, 180. I'll tap it to lock that in. And you'll see it's rotating like that right there. So I'll go ahead and accept that. And now you'll see that that particular inlet is now placed. And I'll go ahead and hit F4 to clear that out. And you'll see that that inlet is placed. Now if I do go back to my references, and this is something that you may see the first time, is my 3D view is turned off. If I turn that back on, your inlet may show up like this which basically represents that it's showing not only the, the 2D cell of that, but it's also showing the 3D cell of that in my 2D window. Because whenever you place a drainage item inside of here, it's gonna do multiple things. The first thing that's gonna do is, of course, place a 2D cell. Another one's gonna place is a 3D cell, which we'll show you here in a second. Another thing that it does do is it assigns the proper prototype to that node. And then also the, the catalog. There may be a certain catalog type that's assigned to that particular inlet. So there's a lot of things that's set up in the background whenever you use that feature definition and you assign whichever node that you're placing. It assigns all that to that particular node right here. And we'll make some changes to those as we go through all the sections. So what I will go ahead and do is go back to my references and turn off I will turn off the 3D portion of it in my 2D window right here. So now what I'm going to do, and I'll pause the video, is I'm going to create a node right here, and also a node right here. That way it catches that water that's coming from here to there, this area right here, and so forth. Now that I have those inlets placed, the next thing that we're going to do is place a flared in section down here on the end for all this water that's coming off the roadway to go down into maybe like a ditch or something that's going down through here. So if I go to my back to my place node tool, and the one that I'm going to use now is underneath the head walls concrete flared in section. And I'm going to use this one right here that says FES-12C. Another thing that I will change for my flared in sections is this option that says elevation is invert. That way it knows where to place that inlet properly from the ground that I have out there. So instead of it being at the top of that pipe, it'll actually be at the invert of that flared in section. So I'll go ahead and check mark that box. And then I just simply follow the prompts through here. I'll select my reference elevation, so I'll use my terrain. What station do I want it at? And I will just use the station of 3 plus 0, 0 with an offset of 65. I will accept that relative to alignment. I will go ahead and accept that method, use the center line as my reference, and I'll just leave it at this rotation and accept it. And now we'll go ahead and hit F4 to clear it out. Now I can always go back in here and change the rotation of this pipe. You know, it may not be exactly at, you know, 90 degrees off of this roadway, depending on how that pipe is being placed. You know, you'll be at the same angle of what the pipe is. So you may have to come back in here and change that, which we'll have some videos on that to kind of show how to easily modify those. But you see how you can place those elements because you have to have the nodes out there first 
in order to put in your connecting pipes to it. So that's some of the basics with placing the nodes. You just use your place node tool, determine which ones that you want to place for your drainage project in the proper locations, set the elevations as needed, depending on if you're gonna use the terrain model or if you wanna hard code those, ele those elevations and then place those nodes out there accordingly. Now, the one thing that I did wanna show in this particular video is if I go back to the place node tool and let me go ahead and just change this back to the inlets. I'll use this two by two curved vein drain. You do have the option that says catchment delineation. I didn't do it to these right here because what we'll do later on is if I want to put in the C value that's coming into these inlets, I can either A, manually put in those numbers, which is perfectly fine. B, I can come in here and use my place catchment tool, define my catchment area, and then go through there and put in the proper settings for the values that I need for, for doing the drainage portion of it, for like my C value and stuff like that. Option C is I can come in here and use this catchment delineation. So whenever I do that, it'll automatically look at my terrain model and put in that catchment area for you. And just to kind of show that, I will go ahead and check mark that box. You do need to set up a feature definition for it. And there's two different options. There's the land use defined area and also user defined. So you could put in whatever C value that you need for your area that you have, whether it's pavement or a rocky area or a rough grass area, you need to put in that, that correct C value. That way it knows how to properly get that water to that spot in the correct amount of time. And there's some different parameters for that. All right, so now I'll just go ahead and basically follow the prompts. It's like my reference element, which is my terrain model. I'll just do it as station four plus zero zero with that same offset relative to the alignment. Select the alignment. That rotation looks good. And what you'll see is once I left click to accept it, it will actually go through here. Let me hit F4 to clear it out. You'll see that it created my catchment area automatically for me. So it looked at this terrain and it says, okay, this is the catchment area for that inlet where you placed it at. So it automatically does that for you. The only drawback with that particular tool is there's no way to modify this drainage area. So if it's incorrect for some reason, maybe it didn't read that terrain model quite correctly. There's really no way I can modify that catchment area. So that's kind of the drawback with that versus if I use my place catchment tool and define it, place it out there. And then if something is not cor correct, I can always go back in there and modify those points to make it bigger or smaller for that drainage area. Just kind of a couple things to keep in mind if you do want to use that catchment delineation or not. So with that, that's some of the options with the place node tool.